All right, fellow refugees, welcome to The Political Refugee. I'm Dave, and here's Tulsi. All right, we're talking Tulsi today. I know there are a group of folks that just watch this channel for Tulsi Gabbard. Excuse me here, I'm going to have some Dr. Pepper laced with vodka. Ah, Vladimir stopped sending the shipments because apparently he hacked. Uh, the election, he was busy hacking and didn't have time to send me the stuff. So maybe next time. Anyway, Trump supporters' favorite Democrat, <laughs> and she is. Let's be honest, this article speaks a little truth here. Uh, and the reason she's liked by Trump supporters is because she's not like the other politicians. Okay? Now, I know a lot of people have trouble seeing the similarities between Tulsi and Trump. But there are a few of those similarities. Um, I think Tulsi is far more nuanced. And uh, Steve Bannon calls her a rock star, and I think she is. What will she do? That's the big question. Tulsi Gabbard is reaching across the aisle on her way out of Congress, raising speculation that she might have a future outside of the Democratic Party. Oh, please, God, please make it happen. Uh, the Hawaiian proposed two pieces of legislation on the beep. You can't say that topic on YouTube. I get demonetized. It has to do with a baby, and that's it. I won't go any further. If you like babies, you can read up on this. If you don't like babies, then... <laughs> wow. Well, that could be interpreted the wrong way. Um, anyway, I made my point. Uh, so she did a couple of things which Democrats never do. They're not supposed to do. Um, Gabbard also teamed up with Thomas Massey, a Kentucky Republican, who was elected with the help of the Tea Party on a bill that would repeal the Patriot Act. Remember the Tea Party? Remember when they were fiscally conservative? <laughs> oh, where did that go, huh? While more in keeping with her civil libertarian image, which again rubs many Democrats the wrong way, she made sure the rollout was bipartisan. In a video announcement, Gabbard said the legislation re-examines how best to strike this balance of protecting our national security interests while also ensuring that the constitutional rights of every single American are preserved. All right. It's not the first time Gabbard has been praised by conservatives of a certain stripe. These aren't necessarily conservatives anymore. They're populists. Steve Bannon called her beyond a rock star and a real populist nationalist. Bannon right now, by the way, has the number one podcast, I think, on planet Earth right now. It's called The War Room. Uh, and people are concerned. They want to know about what happened uh, even if nothing happens with this um, election stuff, um, people are very interested. People can find out lots of good information by watching that show. Just putting it out there. A Washington, D.C. fundraiser for her Democratic presidential campaign earlier this year had plenty of Republicans in attendance. Tulsi has long been uh, Trump supporters' favorite Democrat. And not just for absolutely destroying Kamala Harris in a debate, said conservative political strategist Chris Barron. Tulsi seems an odd fit in the modern Democratic Party. I think she has a political career ahead of her if she bolts the party of AOC. So, sounds like Chris Barron is doing some recruiting. Of course, Tulsi, I think, would have to move out of Hawaii. Um... They go on here to talk about how Hawaii is a solidly blue state. Republicans do occasionally win elections there, but she would be a perennial Democratic target if she somehow did so. This has led some to wonder whether the telegenic 39-year-old is looking outside of electoral politics for her next move. And um, the Democratic strategist, his name is Brad Bannon, it's funny here because his name is Brad Bannon and this guy's name is Chris Barron. And then, of course, you had Stephen Bannon. So Bannon, Barron, 
And then um, uh, Baron again. This is just a weird article. Um, <laughs> as far as maybe all the political strategists in the world have almost the same name. Brad Bannon is quite different than Steve Bannon. Before she ran for Congress, she fought against gay rights. Uh, and then she became a liberal when she wanted to run for Congress. See, the, here's the thing. Issues, all right, one by one, taken one at a time, and not, gee, if you believe this, then you must be that. That's what Tulsi Gabbard is all about. That's what Trump is about to some degree. I mean, Trump wants to give people 2000 bucks, right? Is that a Republican thing? Nope. Anyway, she is shape-shifting again to position herself as a national right-wing commentator on Fox News or Newsmax. Probably not Fox News. She has appeared prominently on Tucker Carlson's show. As has Jimmy Dore, who's, and as Glenn Greenwald. Um, there are a group of people who are progressive in many ways who go on with Tucker Carlson. Tucker will listen. And, you know, a lot of those guys can't go over on the neoliberal channels. I think this is the biggest secret in politics right now, that it's not just about ideology. It's the ruling class, which includes pretty much all of the television networks that are run by large corporations. They're the ruling class. I am part of the underclass. I am a peasant. And so the peasant has to go to the ruling class to get permission to do anything. And you've seen this now on various social media platforms that are all being controlled by the same ruling class. They look at the peasants and they look down upon you. And they really do it with disdain. This guy, Bannon, Brad Bannon, he's just, he's, he, he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand where we're at. You know, as much as gay rights, yeah, that's, is it an issue? Yes, it's an issue. But right now... Are we going to have a constitutional republic or aren't we? Some Democrats go a step further than this. Hillary Clinton criticized Gabbard in remarks many interpreted as claiming this is old news. Again, she's a Russian agent. Gabbard filed and then later dropped a defamation lawsuit. Just the former Bernie Sanders backer called Clinton the queen of warmongers, uh, which is correct, which is correct. Um, remember, we saw, we came, he died. Remember that? I mean, you're celebrating and then it's no different than McCain's bomb, 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 Iraq. Remember that? I mean, these people have a taste for war. They look at war as a fun thing to do. Look, our soldiers, men and women, they do things that most of us don't want to do. But we shouldn't put them in harm's way if they don't have to be put in harm's way. And that's the difference between uh, what I would call a nuanced thinker about foreign policy, somebody who doesn't um, grab the guns first and um, think about diplomacy last. It's just about, hey, we're going to make, do we really want to make the world over in our image right now anyway? Do we really want Venezuela to um, resemble the United States or Bolivia or Syria or Iran or Iraq or any of these places? Do we want them to be like us? Uh, my answer to that is no, and um, we should mind our own business. As someone relatively young, non-white, the first female combat veteran to run for president and the holder of an eclectic, though generally liberal set of political views, um, again, this word liberal, classical liberal views, or, you know, Gabbard could remain an interesting figure to watch. A lot of her supporters here were independents, said a Republican strategist in New Hampshire. Even people from our own party backed her. Well, of course. Why not? She's honest. She's real. She's telegenic. She's thoughtful. She's compassionate. She has empathy for others. She is the real deal. That's why a lot of people like her. Uh, she can be frustrating at times, as yours truly can attest, because there are times where she says things and I go, that's it. I can't do this anymore. But, you know, the last few weeks, maybe it's appealing to my more uh, right of center 
uh, point of view on many topics. I've liked the fact that she's gone in for free speech. I like the fact that she's looking at third trimester and saying, um, maybe not. Um, just these are things that, you know, most Americans can agree on. And we can have a conversation. We can debate issues. I guess the question is, do we really want to debate issues anymore? Because if we don't have an election system that functions properly, then none of this matters. And I'm going to say this for a long time to come. So if you get bored with that sentiment, I'm sorry. It's just the way things are right now. Until that gets resolved and I feel comfortable with it, I'm going to think the whole thing is a scam. Why should you support anybody? Why should you invest your time and your money into anything if you can be canceled out? If your vote can be canceled out, and it doesn't matter whether that's in another state or just because, hey, look at all these ballots we just harvested. You know, it's like picking apples off a tree. And until we resolve those things, folks, um, does Tulsi Gabbard's political future really matter? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe she can be the one to initiate the reforms that we need to fix our broken system. All right, folks, again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, please. Well, please hit the bell for notifications. Don't forget about Patreon. For a buck a month, you can join Patreon and help support the political refugee as I continue to swim through unchartered political waters. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.